Hi, I'm Hilma Volk of CarpalTunnelMaster.com and occasionally I get asked, and you sometimes may have wondered why those old typewriters didn't give people carpal tunnel syndrome like the computers do. Carpal tunnel syndrome has been around for a long time in a lot of professions, but typewriters were not a major problem. And you may wonder why, since typing on the, those old typewriters was harder to press the keys down than these easy computers to use. And I'll tell you why that is, and at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to prevent carpal tunnel syndrome for your own hands. But first we have to do a little anatomy, very simple anatomy, in that the carpal tunnel is in this area here. It's a ditch of wrist bones and across here is a hard strap called the transverse carpal tunnel ligament and it's got other names too, but that forms a tunnel and there's very limited space in that tunnel and in that tunnel there's nine flexor tendons and flexors are the ones that close your fist and extensors are the ones that open them and these tendons run through hollow tubes. There's also the median nerve in there and when the median nerve is pinched you'll get numbness, tingling, or pain mostly numbness or tingling in the thumb, the finger, first finger, second finger and this part of the ring finger, this half of the ring finger and this part of the palm but not this part of the palm. But anyway, why? What happens when you type you're moving your fingers up and down? This motion is caused by your forearm muscles. When your forearm muscles in the front contract, that closes the fingers. It also pulls the wrist down, but the tendons that go through the carpal tunnel are really, 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 really skinny. They're tiny little tendons that go up into your fingers. And when you contract the muscles in the back of your forearm, that will open your fingers. And there's different muscles in your forearms. They have different names. And when you're typing and those fingers are going up and down, up and down, up and down, the tendons inside here are going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now those tendons are long and skinny and they go inside a hollow tube individually. And that's called a tendon sheath. And when those fingers are going up and down and the tendons are going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, uh, there's lubrication in there. It's called synovial fluid. Now you know if your car engine with the pistons going up and down, up and down, up and down really fast, if you don't have oil in your engine, there's going to be a lot of friction and pretty soon your engine is done. It's trashed. <laughs> it seizes up. Well, the synovial fluid inside those tendon sheaths is not motor oil. It dries up and it can dry up fairly quickly. When you're typing and non-stop typing, the synovial fluid dries out. Now what happens with a typewriter? Well, if you got a typewriter, the old-fashioned typewriter, what happens? You put the paper in, you hit the carriage return, and the paper goes in, you, you start typing, you hear the ding of the margin, you hit the carriage return, you start typing, get to the end of the line, hit the carriage return, got another paragraph, hit the carriage return twice, get to the end of the the letter, you start, get the paper out and you put it somewhere. What happens if you make a mistake? Oh darn, you made a mistake. You got to get the white out. Roll the paper up, put the white out in, put the paper back where it was supposed to be. Continue typing until you make another mistake. Get the white out out. And what happens when you're done with that paper? You put it down. Uh, you maybe you type an envelope. You stick it in the envelope. You seal the envelope, you put a stamp on it, or maybe you take it to the file cabinet, or maybe you send it to your boss's desk, or maybe you take it to a copy machine. You're not continuously going like that. What happens with a computer? You make a mistake. No biggie. You backspace, backspace, backspace. Type all over again. You gotta send it to the printer, you hit print. You're not stopping. You gotta send it to the file cabinet, well you just hit file and it goes to a file somewhere in your computer or in your network. You want to send it out, you send it in an email. You never have to stop typing. So after 20 minutes, your hands need a break 
If you don't rest them, guess what happens? Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, friction. Synovial fluid dries up. Parts of the tendon come off, or maybe parts of the tendon sheath comes up, comes off. There's gunk built up in there, gradually. And that's irritating. What happens when there's irritation? There starts to swell. Your body sends in uh, the white blood cells to help with the inflammation. Your body can clean that out. It's helped by mechanical means, which I go over in my program. And it's also helped by ice. Which there's uh, what they call macrophages. They go ooze in and out of just about any part of your body. And when there's a problem, they can go in there and they can gobble up that gunk that's in there. But if you're taking anti-inflammatory drugs, it's like turning the engine light off on your car. Your brain doesn't know there's a problem. It doesn't know to send these guys in there to help with the problem. If you ice it, that encourages it. So if you do mechanical means, that encourages it. If you just... Let's say you're only typing fast for an hour and a half a day. Guess what? You've already dried up your synovial fluid. What do some doctors do? They give you anti-inflammatory drugs, or you take anti-inflammatory drugs yourself. Well, what happens when you do anti-inflammatory drugs? There are doctors who know, who absolutely know, that that's the wrong thing to do, that anti-inflammatory drugs interfere with the healing process. Anywhere in your body, but it's especially crucial inside the carpal tunnel because there's not a lot of room in there. So, first of all, don't take anti-inflammatory drugs. You need to take breaks. Tip one, take breaks. That doesn't mean you have to stop working. If you've got phone calls to make, set them up for every 20 minutes. If you've got mail from the mailbox to read, set it up for every 20 minutes. If you've got somebody to talk to uh, in your office, set it up for 20 minutes. You're going to be more productive if you take a rest anyway. Uh, walk around the office. You've heard that sitting is the next thing to smoking. Well, you, your body needs to move. So get up and do something. Go to the bathroom, whatever. Take five minutes off to let that synovial fluid come back in. Because when the typewriters were used, it never got to be a problem. Because you type for a while, hit the carriage return. Type for a while, hit the carriage return. Take the paper out, and so forth. Got it? What's even worse when you're typing is if you're resting your hands so you're Tendons are going around corners. Anytime your hands are going around corners, either this way or that way, when you're typing, it's like having a rope over a tree branch. Your tendons are going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, if it's already dried up in there, if there's already uh, creating friction, it's like on the tree branch, bark's going to come off or part of the rope's going to come off. Try and keep your back of your forearm and the back of your hand in a straight line when you're typing. Another tip. Besides swelling inside the carpal tunnel, one of the reasons of carpal tunnel is tight forearm muscles and an imbalance in the forearm muscle because pushing down takes more effort than pulling your fingers up and there gets to be imbalance eventually and tight forearm muscles eventually and that pulls the carpal tunnel forward giving you problems there. Now besides true carpal tunnel, which is in there, there's also false carpal tunnels, and I'm not going to talk about those in this video, but they're usually caused by postural problems, and it's getting worse and worse and worse because more and more people have their head down with tablets and smartphones and little notepads and <laughs> even laptops. Anytime your screen and keyboard are close together, you're asking for problems with heads being down for so much. It pinches on the nerves here, which can cause problems here, or here, or there. But that's another video. I'm Hilma Volk from Carpal Tunnel Master. I've got a whole course on how to get rid of your carpal tunnel and the false carpal tunnels that you may have. And if you're welcome to make comments on this video. Like it, don't like it. Subscribe. <laughs> Share this video.